Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online VGC 15 ladder. If you've seen yesterday's episode, you'll know that I did change my team up a bit. We are now using Mega Gardevoir over Kangaskhan, and Gengar is back onto the team with some familiar faces like Suicune and Terrakion and Heatran. Yesterday's episode was really fun, it was a slightly later upload, so if you've not seen that, definitely check it out. And to everyone who came to the stream last night, thank you all so much. I actually just applied for Twitch partnership, and I'm waiting to hear back from them, and I am hoping to stream like three to four times a week now so uh, to everyone who's been coming out to the streams thank thanks a lot and for those that want to watch me stream definitely follow me at twitch.tv slash cybertron vgc anyway let's get into today's episode rating currently is actually 1822 which is pretty nice i've been able to get a pretty good win streak over the last couple of episodes and 1822 is actually top 30 in the world right now and uh, third in the u.s so i was second in the u.s after yesterday's episode but then got passed um but right now the first place is actually only around 1850 so if i can win out these next couple of episodes will be able to capture the number one spot in the country and first place in the world currently is around 1870 to 80 so we're actually pretty close to reaching our goal of number one overall uh, on the sp battle spot ladder which would be absolutely nuts but you know the main thing of this series is really to have fun and try out new Pokemon along the way. So win-loss regardless, it, you know, uh, it's not a big deal, but it would be kind of cool to, you know, peak at first place in the world. But Connor from Ireland with the rating of 1622 is going to be our first opponent of the day. Um, with what seems like a pretty obnoxious team. Not obnoxious, uh, the Cl just Clefable in general is always a scary Pokemon to fight up against. Um, we see Salamence, Ferrothorn, Rotomwash, Heatran, Mianchang, Clefable. So... Um, Gardevoir here is really good because of the ability to just spread damage with Hyper Voice, but then, uh, Connor also has two Steel types, which can definitely be annoying to deal with, uh, though that's kind of what the Terrakion there is for. Uh, it is a very well-constructed team on my opponent's end, because I think, uh, you know, the redirection support from Clefable, uh, the fake out, the two Steel types to cover the fairy weakness, uh, it's, it's very nicely done. So... Let's see here. Gengar seems like a pretty good lead, like always, just because it can't get faked out. It can icy win the Salamence should my opponent lead with it. Um, has a bunch of options. I'm wondering what ability the Clefable has, but probably not going to want to taunt it, assuming it has uh, unaware. So let's see. I'm going to go with Gengar. Uh, Zapdos is actually not terrible in this matchup um, because it can paralyze things. It can roost. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm... Zapdos is probably one of the weaker members of this team, just because I, uh, I'm i normally a more heavy offense guy. So I'm going to go with Gengar. I actually am very tempted to go with Gardevoir. But I kind of want to go with Suicune 2 to set up Tailwind. You know what? I'm going to... Mm. Gardevoir puts on more offensive pressure rather than the start, so I'm going to go with Gardevoir. Um, Terrakion in the back. Uh... Suicune really walls the... Actually, Suicune's really good against the Heatran and the uh, Salamence. So I'm going to bring that. For the last one, I think I need Terrakion to one-hit KO the Ferrothorn and the Heatran. Um, though now I... My, this team in general is actually quite Rotom Wash weak, so I'm going to need to try to take care of it with Gengar and Gardevoir uh, before it causes too much trouble. Rotom Wash is annoying Pokemon to deal with, but the main thing is it doesn't resist many attacks, so you can normally, you know, attack, KO it after three hits. So, um... The thing is, you know, when you have Pokemon that threaten your team heavily, you kind of want to take it down immediately before it does too much damage to your team. So, really just try to KO it before it gets, like, more than two or three attacks off at most. But I'm going to go with my Gengar Gardevoir leads here as we see Mianchou and Heatran coming out. Uh, good lead options by my opponent here. As Let's see what Gardevoir traces. Traces the Flash Fire, which actually helps me out a lot because that heat, uh, Heatran can't just Heat Wave uh, against my Gardevoir, which is really nice. Um, so let's see. Mianshaw is probably going to fake out Gardevoir here, and I would suspect we're going to see a Heat Wave coming out of that Heatran. So I'm very tempted right now to actually swap my Gengar out into Suicune. I'm actually going to do this. Yeah, I'm going to switch out into Suicune, Mega Evolve, and protect to see whether he's carrying Flash Cannon on that Gardevoir. Oh, or on the Heatran. Though I'm thinking maybe I can just uh, Will O Wisp the Mianshaw as well. But the question is, do I want to take a Heat Wave? Uh, based off who I have, my opponent has in the back, you know what? I'm just going to... Hmm. I'm going to switch into Suicune. I don't want to... And Mega Evolve and Protect. And the reason why I'm switch I'm doing this play is because my opponent can't really touch Suicune, and the Gardevoir tracing Flash Fire means that... Or actually, since I'm Mega Evolving, I'm going to lose Flash Fire. <laughs> so maybe I could have stayed in normal form here. But... 
I want to scout out what my opponent uh, can go for here, and that way I can put on more offensive pressure because uh, my Gengar can actually really touch his Heatran, nor can my Gardevoir, so this way at least I have one Pokemon that gives me a better matchup against my opponents too. So Gardevoir is going to go for the Protect here, just because even Fake Out damage hurts a lot, as it does go for the Fake Out. And we actually see the Earth Power into Gardevoir as well, so the double target there, maybe I could have Icy Winded or Will-O-Wisp, but you know what, that's fine. Now here I'm definitely in a pretty decent position. Um, I'm going to want to Tailwind here with my Suicune, just because uh, it's a pretty good opportunity to Tailwind. I'm actually thinking of swapping back out into Gengar, because this Gardevoir is really good against my opponent's team in terms of spamming Hyper Voice. Um... Though I don't think my opponent can even KO me and Shells, or, or KO Gardevoir, so maybe I can just Hyper Voice. Yeah, you know what, I'm just going to stand on Hyper Voice. I don't want to switch too much by lose and lose momentum as a result. <laughs> so that first turn played out perfectly. Um, I was thinking of Will-O-Wisp being the Mian Shell there, or Icy Winding, but I decided against it because, like I said, uh, even if I were to get those attacks off, the next turn I'd have a Gengar and Gardevoir out, and those can't really do very much against the Heatran that my opponent has right now. Uh, whereas Suicune can 2-hit KO Heatran with Skull, unless it's a really bulky Heatran, but if it's that bulky, then uh, it's probably going to want to switch out. And the nice thing here is Heatran can't really touch Suicune. Mian Shell actually goes straight for a Rock Slide, so um, I'm okay with that as long as it doesn't flinch. And I actually get the Hyper Voice off, that's really nice. I actually want Scald more right now though. I Mian mean, has a Focus Sash, which is actually even more helpful for me, because if I do get the Tailwind up, I can outspeed it this following turn. As we do see a Heat Wave coming out here, but my Pokemon are pretty bulky. Uh, as you see, Gardevoir, uh, able to hang out with 77 HP. Unfortunately though, Suicune is going to flinch there, so... Um, you know, when you use Rock Slide, you normally expect one of two Pokemon to flinch, so I can't really complain. But here I'm going to go for the Tailwind once again, and this time I'm actually going to swap Gardevoir out into Terrakion. Um, because after this, if I am able to successfully set up Tailwind this turn, I can close combat and uh, Snarl next turn to pick up two KOs. And uh, I do want to save this Gardevoir in case my opponent has Salamence in the back. Uh, or Rotom Wash. And by bringing out Terrakion, you know, the Mianchal is probably going to go for another Rock Slide, so I'm hoping I don't flinch once again here. Uh, flinches are very annoying to deal with, and uh, that is why I like Speed Control. Icy Wind prevents your opponent from even getting Rock Slides off in the first place, but uh, Mianchal goes for the Low Kick onto Suicune there instead, uh, which I'm actually very, very happy to see, because that means Suicune's definitely not going to get flinched this turn, and I'm guaranteed to Rock Slide, as Terrakion actually avoids the Heat Wave there. It doesn't really matter since I have Lumberry, so wouldn't have like broken a potential Sash, and it wouldn't have done very much damage, and Suicune does get the free Tailwind up, which is perfect. So that plays out fantastically for me, as, uh, yeah, I really can't complain. These first couple of turns have played out pretty well. So now I'm going to Snarl. Because uh, if my opponent wants to switch out, then he's probably going to have to bring out Rotom Wash or Solomon's and uh, both of those. Uh, Rotom Wash is definitely a special attacker. Solomon's might not be, but um, regardless, uh, the Suicune can outspeed both of my opponent's Pokemon right now. And uh, Mian Shell is already in KO range, so I'm just going to go for the Snarl there. Uh, though Mian Shells sometimes carry Wide Guard at this point. You know, if it Wide Guards, that's fine. He trench just going to get KO'd by a close combat. And I do have three full turns of Tailwind right now to take advantage of, so... Um, Really good first couple of turns right now, and I'm definitely liking my position. But, um, you know, am I, I haven't been able to do too much damage on my opponent's side, so I do have to try to use this uh, Tailwind to the best of my ability and uh, pick up some KOs right away. We're probably going to see Protects come out. Uh, Heatran, a Pokemon that often carries Protect. Mianxiao is actually one of the, those Pokemon in VGC that opt not to use Protect because it's already feral enough as it is, so you really use it with a full offensive set like Fake Out. You know, we saw Low Kick, Rock Slide. Um, last one tends to be a support move like Wide Guard, Quick Guard. As it actually does go for the Wide Guard, but like I said, I'm fine with that because Terrakion's just going to get a close combat off against this Heatran. Uh, we'll see if it's going to be able to knock it out, though. As it does pick up the KO, which is perfect. So... That was basically what I was saying. Uh, the one thing I was fearing was a potential Mian Shell switch into the Salamence to get the um, Intimidate off, and an Intimidate would have actually probably prevented me from getting the uh, KO there onto the Heatran. But instead, you know, I'm like close combat normally KOs Heatran anyway, so that ends up playing out perfectly. As I still have two more turns of Tailwind left, and this Mian Shell is uh, definitely in some trouble because it's you know slower than both of my Pokemon right now. It's got it's already revealed its full moveset as Rotom actually comes out here for my opponent. So, knowing that, I am going to... I'm going to Ice Beam this Mian Shell spot because uh, I, I would suspect it's going to go for a Wide Guard this turn. 
Um, and if it does go for it, that's fine. If it switches out, though, I think Salamence is going to be my opponent's last Pokemon, so I'm guaranteeing a KO over Garwas, just because the Miesha revealed all four of its attacks, and I'm just going to go for the close combat onto Rotom. I'm fine losing Terrakion or Suicune here. I still have one more turn of Tailwind left, and that means I get a free switch into the Mega Gardevoir I have in the back. And a close combat plus a Hyper Voice should be able to knock out that Rotom Wash. So uh, I definitely feel really strong about my position right now. But Rotom Wash is, like I said, one of the more annoying Pokemon for my team to deal with, so I... If there's any Pokemon that can give my opponent a chance to get back into it, it's definitely Rotom Wash with Mence in the back. But, uh, Mianshell switches out, so show me Salamence, please. <laughs> nice! Got him. So Salamence comes in here, and obviously I'm very pleased about that because I just got a Ice Beam KO. On t most likely a KO, I'm not sure uh, how bulky the Salamence is actually. Maybe it's EV'd, as uh, Close Combat actually does a average amount there. Obviously because of the Intimidate. Um, but like I said, I was predicting the Solomon switch in, and even if it didn't switch out, I would have KO'd Mianshaw anyway. So, Ice Beam there does pick up the one-hit KO onto Laments, and that was definitely the Mega Evolution on my opponent's team, so I'm really happy to have picked up the KO there. As we actually see T-Bolt coming out onto Suicune instead of targeting down the Terrakion slot, which is even better for me. Um, because uh, Terrakion matches up against this Rotom Wash uh, better than the... Um, Better than the Suicune does. Like, I'd rather have Terrakion in the late game just to win the game rather than, uh, um, yeah. So I have one more turn of Tailwind left. This Mianshell doesn't have a way to even stop me from KOing it, so all I have to do here is switch out Terrakion to Gardevoir, Sludge Bomb the Mianshell, then uh, it's gonna be a two-on-one battle at worst. Uh, Mianshell can't outspeed me right now because I do have one last turn of Tailwind, and this is kind of where you see when uh, not having Protect in VGC really hurts you, especially against speed control teams like Trick Room or Tailwind, um, knowing my opponent's full moveset allows me to make, you know, guaranteed safe plays, and that's why I Ice Beam into the Shell slot last turn, um, and yeah, I mean, it played out perfectly, like, you guys saw, I, f I feel like if my opponent had, was able to, like, for example, get a Dragon Dance up with Mance, it actually would have given me a lot of trouble, but instead I denied any chance of a comeback from there, as Shell not gonna go for the Fake Out here, probably going for the Rock Slide, or maybe the Low Kick into the Trackdown slot, Sludge Bomb there is going to knock it out, so it's a 3 on 1 battle now, as Rotom goes for a Hydro Pump into the Gengar slot, uh, curious decision to Hydro Pump there, instead of Thunderbolting, but, you know, that's fine. So now all I have to do is just target it down with attacks, I'm just going to Sludge Bomb and Hyper Voice. I feel like this battle was a really good demonstration of uh, positioning. Uh, my opponent definitely had the lead advantage because I didn't match up very well against the Heatran. As I actually get the poison there with Sludge Bomb, I feel like Sludge Bomb gets so many poisons. Uh, Mega Gardevoir is able to get that Hyper Voice off, knocking out the Rotom Wash and picking up a win in the first game of today's episode. So we are able to beat Connor in a uh, pretty close game. I mean, I ended up winning 3-0, but I felt like I was never two ahead, um, the Mianshao Heatran lead was definitely scary because uh, my lead just couldn't do anything against it, but uh, I am able to notch a win, and I feel like the Suicune switch in ended up being really helpful, and I'm, my opponent not having Thorn in the back definitely helped out a lot as well, but I'm sure having Heatran and Terrakion uh, in team preview scared it off. So uh, we jumped to 1830 now, so only around 20 points away from first in America, which is pretty, pretty neat. Um, and yeah, I mean... <laughs> I like, was actually checking my uh, battle history on the battle spot yesterday. Uh, it's purple with a rating of 1738, pretty high rating there, is going to be our second opponent of the day. But yeah, like I think I've been able to win the last 13 games, which uh, is definitely nice. Uh, if, on battle spot, like, it's so easy to win a ton of games and then lose a ton of games as well. Uh, if you you know watched last season's battle spot, in the end I ended up tanking my rating from like 1880 all the way down to sub 1800s because I had a really bad losing streak. Uh, so the most important thing about battle spot, in my opinion, is just to go in with the mentality of having fun. Rankings really don't mean anything, especially since you know they don't even count towards world qualification. But um, like I said, it would be a pretty nice accomplishment, especially for all the viewers, you guys out there, if we are able to reach the number one spot. But let's get into this second game of the day. Purple here has got a team of Bish. Sharp, Landers, T, Rotom, Heat, Gengar, Salamence, and um, Lapras. So, pretty interesting team, especially the Lapras. Everything else looks pretty standard. Salamence, most likely the Mega Evolution, but uh, as we saw in the last game, we were able to eliminate it right away. Speakun here actually is very nice because it can kind of wall the Landorus and the Salamence. Gengar can't really do much against that either. Rotom Heat's the one Pokemon I'm kind of scared of, but if I can set up a Tailwind, then I can just outspeed it and Scald it. Um, no fake out for my opponent, which is also interesting. Hmm. I do kind of want to lead with Gengar. I feel like my opponent's going to go with uh, his Gengar lead as well. And it's kind of a testament to how good Gengar is as a Pokemon. Um, I'm going to go with Gengar, and I think Heatran. 
Though I guess if my opponent leads with the Lapras, that would be problematic. Zapdos isn't bad here, though. I really need to get HP Ice on this Zapdos. Uh, I like HP Ice so much more than Heat Wave. And it just like, if I had HP Ice here, I'd have another way to hit the Landris and Salamence for super effective. So I'm gonna go with Gengar. Uh, picking the partner is really tough here. Carnivore is not bad, honestly. Nor is Suicune. You know what? I'm gonna actually go with Suicune. I'm going to have Heatran. Oh, I'm running out of time. Okay, I went with Gardevoir and Terrakion in the back just because I feel like they have more offensive pressure. Heatran's kind of nice, but has there's Landers T on my opponent's end, there's a Suicune on my opponent's end, and Terrakion can one-hit KO. Early, uh, the Bisharp and get super effective damage attacks off against the Rotom Heat, the Lapras, the Salamence, and Gengar's really frail, so Rock's like can two-hit KO it anyway. So I'm gonna go with Gengar Suicune as my opponent goes with Gengar Lapras, so Battle of the Water type's really coming out here, um, which is pretty interesting to see. So, so this is actually quite the interesting matchup right now. I'm definitely, hmm, I kind of want to just Tailwind right from the start. Icy Wind and Tailwind? Nah. Um, though the Gengar might go for a Taunt, so maybe I can, I'm going to Icy Wind, actually yeah, I'm going to Icy Wind and Snarl. I want to scout out what this Gengar has and I don't want him to just Taunt me. Icy Wind fortunately does connect on both of my opponent's Pokemon, decreasing the speed uh, of both Pokemon obviously, breaking a potential Focus Sash, though I wasn't uh, going for a Sash breaking game play here. As uh, Gengar actually goes for the Energy Ball, that's like the last play I would have expected and that does a whole lot of damage. But as you see, there was a critical hit there, so uh, Suicune able to take that even with the crit, and I am able to further decrease this Gengar special attack with the Snarl, so uh, not the play I was expecting that first turn from my opponent's end, but interesting to see, as I am able to decrease that Gengar special attack and get some nice damage off against it as well. A Lapras, however, does go for the Freeze Dry, which was not what I was anticipating. That might KO me? Nah, almost though. So after that, I definitely want to set up Tailwind this following turn. Um, kind of want to switch out Gengar here too, just because I don't want my Sash to be broken. So you know what, yeah, I'm going to switch into, uh, but I don't want to get Scalded, that's the thing. So you know what, I'm just going to Sludge Bomb the Lapras and Tailwind to set up my Gardevoir and Terrakion in the back. Maybe I could have went more offensive here, but I'm thinking of the long term, and I actually get the poison on Lapras as well, so Sludge Bomb's poison rate is absolutely ridiculous. As Energy, be Energy Ball excuse me, comes out against Suicune, uh, actually picks up the KO. I did not think that would knock out given the Snarl special attack decrease, but uh, that is end up KOing me, as we do see another Freeze Dry into the Gengar slot. So um, even though I have a better start, I'm definitely uh, behind in terms of Pokemon, but however, I do get a free switch into my Terrakion in the back, which is... Uh, actually, I don't know if I want to bring Terrakion or Gardevoir. Gardevoir might actually make a bit more sense here, just because... Now nah, I'm gonna go... Ooh, this is actually tough. I'm gonna go with... Terrakion. The reason behind that is because I can just Rock Slide to KO the Gengar here. Um... Yeah. Now I wonder if my opponent's gonna want to switch in Bisharp here, but you know what? I'm gonna Icy Wind regardless uh, of the fact knowing my opponent has Bisharp in the back, because... If my opponent switches in anything else, Landers, T, Solomons, or Rotom Heat, it's going to be eating up a Rock Slide and an Icy Wind. None of those Pokemon can take it well. Let's say Bisharp comes in and gets the Defiant Boost, that's fine. You know, even a plus two Bisharp can't really do much to a Terrakion and a Gengar when I outspeed and I can Will-O-Wisp and double kick it. So, um, normally you don't want to use these, you know, special attack or speed dropping moves like Icy Wind or Snarl or whatnot against uh, potential Bisharps in the back. But honestly, given the position I'm in, I'm willing to take that risk because everything else in the back gets hit pretty darn hard. But, yeah, Energy Ball Gengar is definitely a newer one. Um, we saw Thunderbolt in, I think it was, it wasn't yesterday, two, two days uh, ago, uh, that Soon had on his Gengar. Um, and it does allow Gengar to at least hit these bulky water types a bit better, because otherwise it's just completely walled. We are going to see Gengar switch out here. I presume Bishop's coming in here. But it's actually going to be Landers, and this is why I made the play I did. However, in retrospect, I'm not actually sure if this was a great idea, because uh, with the Intimidate, I might not be able to knock out the Lapras. Uh, but Lapras goes for the Ice Shard, okay. Uh, I guess he was expecting a close combat onto it. Um, but getting that Ice- oh my gosh, I actually knocked out the Landers, that was probably a crit. Yeah, it was. Um, I didn't really need it, actually, like, I would have been fine if I didn't get it, but, um, 
This ends up working out perfectly. Rock Slide here does connect with Lapras, and I think it might be able to KO with the Poison. So, uh, RNG has definitely been on my side this match because I got the Poison, obviously, onto Lapras and the Crit onto Landorus, but quite honestly, I really don't think I needed either of those, um, given the position I've been early on. Uh, but I do knock out both of those, which is really nice, and I still have Tailwind uh, left. So, things are looking real solid for me right now, as my opponent's going to have Gengar. I guess Salamence is the last Pokemon. Maybe Bisharp, though. It's Salamence. Okay. That's perfect, uh, especially because I've got Gardevoir in the back. That's probably Mega Salamence, though, so um, I'm wondering what kind of Mega Men's set it really is carrying. So I'm just going to Icy Wind and Rock Slide here. The game's still not over, though. Despite me being ahead, um, you know, it's definitely far from over. For example, if Salamence protects here and I somehow miss the KO onto Gengar, uh, my opponent's Gengar can, I guess, retaliate back um, and KO my Gengar or Icy Wind. Um, I'm really not sure though. We'll see. I think Icy Wind but and Rock Slide can knock out the Gengar though, but I did get intimidated twice with this Trakion. However, I don't really want to switch out right now because um I still have Tailwind up, so I want to take advantage of the speed and just get damage off as quickly as possible. Um We're gonna see Mega Man's probably evolve Mega Evolve here. Or Mega Vent. <laughs> Salamence Mega Evolve, which it does. Um I'd guess Protect coming out here to stall out the Tailwind and to get the speed raise, but if it doesn't Protect, it's a goner, and it doesn't Protect, wow, that's a... Uh, I don't know, I mean, I, at this point, you really should be Protecting with Mens, uh, allowing me to get an Icy Wind off here. It shows you the power of how good uh, Icy Wind Gengar really is. As a uh, Gengar is actually faster and gets the Will-O-Wisp off, but Lum Terrakion is a boss, and I am able to burn that uh, Will-O-Wisp off, and I am going to be able to get a Rock Slide off here. That's basically going to be game. Fortunately, connecting with both of my opponent's Pokemon. Let's see how much damage it actually does. And you see how bulky Mens there is. Um, of course, I did get intimidated twice, but Mega Salamence is one of the bulkier Mega Evolutions. As it does go for a double edge here against the Gengar, probably going to knock me out. As it does. Um, but that's fine because it's going to take recoil damage and actually KO itself. So I'm able to win the second game of the day 2-0. Um, and I am glad I ended up bringing the Terrakion. Um, though I guess if I brought out Gardevoir in that position it would have been fine. But the reason why I brought out Terrakion over Gardevoir when I had Tailwind up was because I knew my opponent potentially had Rotom Heat in the back. To which uh, Rotom Heat can't really, you know, switch into Rock Slides. But it can switch into Hyper Voices. Um, so that team, or that battle really demonstrated the power of Tailwind, you know. Um, Terrakion would spread damage and Gengar really just overwhelmed um, my opponent and that first turn was kind of weird I wasn't expecting the energy ball from my opponent, but that was a really cool battle uh, Definitely two great games today as we end up notching two wins. So now I should be second in the US once again and uh, As we check our rating 1843 So we're one win away from reaching 1850 and first in the US, which is neat Anyway, that's it for today's episode guys Leave a like as always if you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. All right. Peace